Hi, I'm Mike Edwards. The company is Home Improvement Doctor, uh, part of the DIY Doctor Group. And we're doing a, a, a series of videos uh, around some ceramic tiling. And we're on our test site down in Somerset. So apologies for any noise of dumpers and cranes and things that are going on around us. Um, but at the minute we're in a little film studio that we've created in a container to enable us to show you bits and pieces because obviously we don't always have a job going out actually physically on site. So we use the film studio and our test site to, to show you stuff that, um, that you've asked us about. The first thing that, um, that we did was to set out ceramic tiles and how to get them on the wall and now we're going to be looking at the different tools that you need to complete a ceramic tiling job as well as you can. There are other videos in the series grouting and cutting and drilling ceramic tiles. They're, they're, they're all to follow and they'll all be found in the series. So now we're just going to be talking about the tools that you can use and each individual video will show you how they're used best um, in the series. Um, and we're going to start with the very, very basics. Now a good pencil is important. Um, a normal sort of HD pencil, yeah they're great but you will find that if you're transferring marks onto walls or ceramic tiles every now and again that breaks and that can be a bit of a pain. So we use a builder's pencil or a carpenter's pencil actually which is a, a big elongated thick pencil, doesn't break so easily, gives you a fine line if you want it to or a normal pencil line um, if you want it to do that. Um, two spirit levels required in a bathroom. One we recommend to be either two foot or four foot long um, to allow you to transfer a level over a longer distance. And for individual placement on tiles that are critical around basins and one thing and another where you can't transfer the level because there's an obstacle in the way like a basin or a toilet, a little boat level. Um, and as you can see, tiny little um, very, very sensitive bubble right in the middle. So two levels required on an on a ordinary tiling job. And another thing that, uh, a very basic thing that, that we use are tile spacers. Now, if you go into a DIY store, you will buy spacers for wall tiles that are a couple of millimetres thick, two millimetre tile spacing. You will see from our grouting tiles video that DIY Doctor always uses four millimetre spacers, sometimes five millimetre spacers in the wall. This is a four millimetre spacer. Um, and there are, there, there are two types. These that you can buy readily, the cross spacers, and these particular spacers that are available for a, from a company called Shaw Tile. You can find about them on our website, DIY Doctor. These particular spacers have a lot, a lot of uses and they're, they're quite versatile. These are the normal ones, four millimeter tile spacers, and we'll show you more about those in our grouting tiles video. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is cutting ceramic tiles. There's an entire video devoted to cutting ceramic tiles, but we're going to talk about the tools that we can use for doing that particular job. And the first one we're going to talk about is um, a small electric tile cutting machine. These cost between 30 and 40 pounds, depending where you buy them. They're available in most DIY stores and, of course, online. And the very first thing that we're going to talk about is plugging it in. It will come with an ordinary plug attached to its lead, which is fine. But before you put it into the power source in your home, please use an RCD socket. Now you can buy extension leads as we have here, an extension lead with an RCD socket. So that goes into your power supply and then you plug the tile cutter into the RCD. So if anything goes wrong at all, um, if, if there's any water splashes on the electric, somebody turns the power off, cable cuts or whatever, you're safe. That's the important thing, keeping you safe. Um, and if you're doing the cutting in the bathroom, there's some water about, you have to be particularly safe. But, uh, but use for all electrical appliances, electric power tools, please use an RCD socket. So we'll fade out for a second while we get that plugged in and then we'll come back to talk about the uh, cutting. We're plugged in and we're ready to go. This particular cutter and cutters like it have all got similar features. They come with a um, guide on one side or another that's movable. So you can move the guide backwards and forwards to suit the size of the cut you'd like to make. And they simply clamp up against the side of the machine. The blade itself 
is in the machine or the blade comes separately with easy instructions on how to fit it. And of course the blade has a guard. The, these are water cooled, these machines, so that water splashes on the tile as you cut it, stops it burning, stops it smoking, and you simply lift one side and tip the water in there. Keep a jug of water handy because the water splashes out and you lose it fairly frequently and they nearly always come with a sub guide which clips onto the straight tile guide and allows you to cut the tiles at an, a an angle. So you simply put the tile in there and as you slide that up the runner it will cut at an angle for you. But we'll talk more about that in our cutting ceramic tiles video. So a very very quick demonstration of how these things work and I must remember to put my ear defenders on um, and of course my safety goggles. Now these are a good idea to have, in fact they're a very good idea to have when you're doing your own cutting. So the first thing that we'll do is put our safety stuff on, turn on the cutter, I'll stop that there because there is an entirely separate video to devoted to cutting ceramic tiles but you can see how easy that is to cut those especially when you have repetition cuts. You might have 10 or 15 cuts of the same size to do around the bath or up the wall or whatever and that makes life particularly easy. If you don't want to buy one of those you can buy one of these. This one is a heavy duty contractor's tile cutter. It does exactly the same job as that, but it does it with more uh, manual input, shall we say. You have the guide um, on, the, on the right hand side that moves in and out for the size of cut you'd like. And you have the cutting wheel. Uh, again, we'll go into this more carefully in the cutting ceramic tiles video. There's a cutting wheel under there, which you manually move across the tile. Whereas this one, you move the tile through the blade. This one, you move the blade through the tile. So that's a manual tile cutting tool. We'll put that there. Now when you get, these are fine, the two things that I've shown you for a, a straight line. But if you want to produce something like this, if there's a shape in a bathroom, or you're creating with some mosaic in the middle, we'll talk more about that. If you're creating a shape or you have an awkward shape to cut round, something like a, a toilet pipe in a bathroom, then you need um, something other than the straight line cutting. Now the first and most obvious thing that we use for that is a ceramic tile saw. And the saws have carborundum blades and they simply cut their way through the tile. We'll talk more about that in our cutting ceramic tile videos and the vibration caused by this saw and the reason tiles break. So we can cut shapes of this, but and this is particularly hard work cutting as, as any kind of sawing is, whether it's timber, metal or ceramic tiles. Um, it's all quite hard. And we can use that or in fact the straight line cutters to trim off the surplus just by cutting a series of straight lines. We can trim off a lot of the surplus of ceramic tiles. But to create the very fine shapes that we want, or we want to try and achieve, the first thing that we've got to do is to see what shape that is. What is the shape? We need to transfer the shape from the wall to the tile. So how do we do that? There's a couple of ways that we can do that. And the first one is a very clever invention called a profile gauge. Um, and that's an example of a profile gauge and you can see that if I want to transfer the corner of this table somewhere else I can quite simply push the profile gauge against the corner of the table and that will give me an exact shape and if I want to transfer that shape to the wall I can place that on the wall use my pencil and trace around that mark. So I've transferred that shape to the wall quite easily. However, these are very, very useful, but they don't always tell you where the shape starts and finishes, especially with a circle. 
So, you, again, you'll see a lot more about this in our cutting ceramic tiles video. It's useful sometimes before you start tiling to cut out some pieces of cardboard, ordinary cardboard, the same size as the tiles you're going to use. And then we can use these with a pair of scissors to create a template to transfer a shape from the wall to the tile. So we can use cardboard as a cutout. So that's another tool that we use for ceramic tiling. Then when you have the shape, you've transferred this shape via a pencil line onto this tile and it's quite an intricate shape. So we're not going to need to nibble away at this tile to create that shape. And using these tile nips, it's very, very easy to create this shape. As you can see, I can follow that line all the way around very, very gently. And that's one type of tile nip. There's a spring in the center so that the handles close on themselves. If it's very, very intricate, you can use these tile nips. They do exactly the same job, but in a smaller, more intricate way. And these are called parrot nips, presumably because the head looks like a parrot. And they will do exactly the same job. Again, more about those in the ceramic tile cutting video. And these are a relatively new innovation. These are wheel nips, um, and these are actually very, very, very good indeed. Instead of a blade, they use a wheel which can be replaced, which theoretically gives you a much longer life because you can undo these two screws here and simply turn the wheel around a little bit. So you have two cutting discs as opposed to cutting nips. So they should give you a much longer life. So they're nip wheels. So we have our shape. But as you can see, and as you can feel, it's a little rough. Now, because this is going to butt up against the shape in the wall, we're actually going to see this joint. So we want to try and smooth that out. And we use carborundum to do that. In its original form, carborundum comes in a block. So this is a carborundum stone. Um, and we can simply use this as a file to smooth out the edges of the carborundum. So that's a carborundum block. That's, uh, that's in our tiling toolkit. More about it in our other videos. Carborundum, it's also applied to files. So a carborundum file, this one is a 15 millimeter file. Um, and again, you'll see the, the whole episode uh, in the other videos, but uh, it's quite obvious what these are capable of doing. So just by using the file there, we've created a little bit of indent. So these are very, very handy for filing a smooth round, say around a pipe, for example. This is 15 millimeters. This is 12. They come in various sizes. So that's our ceramic tiling tools video part one. Uh, there is part two because we've a number of other tools to go through. Um, and so far we've, you know, we've managed now to cut the tiles to a shape or in straight lines and get them on the wall. Um, we'll then talk about uh, the various other tools that we use and, and move on in video number two.